guys, Mix here, and in today's video, we are going to be grinding. So as you guys know, we have been working on a 1980 Honda CB750 that I got running for the first time in 20 years, and I know I've been saying that every single outro, but I'm so proud that after rebuilding this engine, that it was able to fire up, and now we are going to be putting it into this half scout NASCAR. So in the last video, we really didn't do much. We just basically gathered the necessities in order to make this happen. So we got the welder, the cutting tool, the vise, and a couple other small things uh, that were needed in order to complete what we we're going to be doing uh, today and in further videos with this build. So what I want to try and accomplish in today's video is try my best to get this engine mounted into uh, the back of this. So over here, as you can see, uh, we have some metals. Now, these are gonna be doing like kind of the lighter work, well, maybe besides the uh, the flat bar, but this is basically just gonna be for like the top mount of the engine, but the base that's gonna be holding the majority of the weight is gonna be this brolic pipe. So this one I had to order online and it is pretty beefy. So I ordered three feet of it. I think that should be plenty of enough. So definitely a really, really nice pipe and super strong. And what I plan on using this for is, as I just said, use it as the base and run it across. And then I'm going to have a support that will bring it down. And it'll basically be like an L shape and probably with some more supports underneath it. And then along that pipe that's going to be running on both sides of here, I'm going to cut a piece of flat bar, drill a hole in it, and then weld it onto the pipe, which will then go into these two engine mounts down here. And then the length I'm gonna be doing, which is seven and a half inches, seven and a half inches from here to there, it's almost gonna be as if the engine is gonna be hanging in a motorcycle engine like how it was before, but just in the mini cup car. And also in the last video, we were kind of debating back and forth whether or not I should drop the axle underneath the frame, leave it how it is with just the uh, adjustment that I did in the last video at the very lowest spot, or drill into this bracket and then lower it even more. And the majority of the vote seem to just leave it how the adjustment is, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to tighten these down and just make it at its lowest point. And it lowered down about an inch and a half from what it last was, so that's not bad. Because a lot of you were saying, like, don't mess with the, like, geometry of the axle, because if, if it's off by a little bit, this thing's going to be, like, crab walking down the road. It's not going to be a good time. And the way that these brackets are, they're symmetrical on each side, so all I would need to do is just tighten them down, uh, tighten down these little tensioners just to make sure that they stay in place, and then we'll be good to go with that. And one last thing before we get working, um, I've been practicing welding a lot, and I've been getting better <laughs> than how I was doing, and I'm, I'm confident that I can put down some good enough welds um, to have everything put in place, and then... If I'm not, and if I really can't get a good weld going down, then I could probably get a friend over here. Then he could see if my welds are okay, and if they're not, then he could just go over them uh, with some strong, good welds, but I think I should do well enough. And this Harbor Freight welder has been kicking butt. This thing is freaking awesome. So I'm super happy how that's working. But anyway guys, that is enough chit chat. What I want to go ahead and begin doing first is just tighten down this axle, because um, that's what we got to do first of all, and then after that, I want to go ahead and grind away some more with this beefy grinder I have and just get rid of all of the powder coat and everything so we can put down some nice welds and then we can begin cutting the metals in the shapes that I need and everything and then I don't know if we're going to get to welding them tonight because I've been practicing all day and everything um, so I am starting this video off a little bit late if not then we can just carry on to tomorrow weld them all up and honestly the hardest issue is probably going to be trying to lift this engine up and get that onto here just like the pure weight of it is nuts so but anyway, let's get started on that right now. Alrighty, so I just finished up uh, tensioning the axle, so that is all good to go right now. And then I just finished up grinding some more on the on the uh, paint. I forgot to press play on the time lapse, so unfortunately I didn't get that recorded. But I basically. Uh, went all of there and on that pipe a little bit. It probably won't be the last time we use that uh, because I probably am, am gonna end up, uh, you know, needing to do this side, you know, all those pipes when I do the, the upper engine mounts. Um, once I figure out exactly where I want them, then I'll grind it all and then we'll work it from there. So now I wanna go ahead and whip out the tape measure and uh, begin measuring precisely everything that I need to and then we can pull out the pipes and cut it how I need it, all the angles I need in order for them to connect flushly, and then it would be time to weld. So we're moving along pretty nicely. So as I was just standing here thinking, um, so I need this to be seven 
and a half inches so I need to make sure that half of seven and a half 3.75 I believe it is uh, is right in the middle of these two bars so what I'm gonna do to ensure that I make sure that the two main engine mounts are straight and everything is I'm gonna cut some flat bar I have plenty of it so I shouldn't have to worry about running out I'm gonna cut the seven and a half and then just weld it on here real quick make sure it's nice and straight and then that'll basically help me along the road uh, make sure that everything is directly how it should be. I can use a flat edge, you know, make sure that it's all straight and going perfectly back. So what I just got to do real quick is just uh, grind off some of here real quick, get all that dirt and paint off, and then I could cut it with the new cutoff wheel, which I hope works. <laughs> I never really have luck with cutting metal, but I just picked up some of these metal uh, bits, so hopefully that'll help. But then we'll be nice and organized to do the main bar organizing. guys so I just did a few uh, small welds uh, on right here obviously and then I, I I tried to do a tack with my left hand I haven't even tried welding with my left hand yet out of all the hours I practiced I never tried it and I was able to get a little bit tacked down but that one isn't too bad but it is nice and solid on there and perfectly on both sides six and a half inches from that little plate right there so now that that is on there we will have an accurate measurement on the straightness of our engine mat bars. So now that we have that plate all welded up, I want to go ahead and uh, put the pipe in the vise, which I already did, and I want to try and make this into a little U shape. Um, I got a one and a half inch Milwaukee hole dozer, and I want to see how this works. This might be a little bit tricky to get it all lined up, especially on a, a round surface, but I'm going to try my best. It has a little bit of a drill bit on here, so I might just put it in a punch right here, and then put it right on the edge so that the whole entire circle on the hole dozer um, is on the pipe then I'll just give it a shot this is some pretty thick pipe so hopefully it goes in there pretty quickly if not then I might need something stronger All right, let's see how this does okay yeah, it's already dancing off I really wish I had one of those like big drill sets that you could just put down with the arm and it goes straight down won't even have to worry about it slipping so I need to take my time with this, really try and get this in there. Alright, so I was able to uh, get the drill bit down into the hole, so now let's see how the, uh, the dozer does. Holy cow! The drill is definitely not liking this. This thing's already dead. So the whole dozer is actually doing pretty well. I'm pretty impressed by it. The little arc in it is coming out pretty clean, except that the drill already died. It is really hot. It's probably overheating. Yeah, it's on one. And I just took this thing off the charger. So it is currently pretty dark outside. Um, so what I might do is I'll charge this up, and then I'll charge up a couple other drill batteries that I have. And then tomorrow we can continue on. Uh, we can finish up drilling this, which is holding us up right now. And then once that we have that drilled and everything's all planned out, we could be we could begin welding everything and hopefully having the engine in by tomorrow. So I'm pretty pumped up. I'm really hoping we could do it. So I'll see you guys then. So guys, we are back here the next morning, and I now have two drills, both fully charged. So what I want to go ahead and do right now is to finish cutting that out and I do kind of want to be a little bit quiet because it is still relatively early right now and it's pretty loud. But then once I'm done with that, my plan is to uh, use this little arc I made and to weld it onto this pipe. But obviously, you know, I'm not going to weld the whole pipe on. I need to measure how much I need and then make it go out on a diagonal. And then I'm going to have another pipe um, that's going to be going straight. So I think that should work pretty well. So I'm just going to go ahead and just grind this out real quick. I'm not going to bother recording it. I am almost through and this thing has done a really, really good job. Better than I thought it was going to be. So it should be out in no time. All right, so I just got my little uh, U-joint cut out and it came out really, really clean. So I'm really stoked on that. So now what I'm going to do is line it up uh, with that pipe right there and then measure how far out I want it to come out diagonally 
cut it, cut the slant, and then basically I'm just gonna add on the straight from there and then cut the pipe where I need to. And honestly, this thing went right through the pipe because I need to cut the uh, edges. Now, obviously it was a little bit thinner than how it mainly is, but it went right through it like butter. So hopefully it goes through the rest of the pipe like that. That would be nice. So I wanna make sure that this piping is as low as possible, like in comparison with the axle. So I want it to be at most four inches um, from the bottom of the frame. So I need to make sure that it's nice and flat and make sure that it's not going on a slope or anything. So definitely need to make sure that this is level. So I need to cut off roughly about a foot, make the flat slant, and then it will come back probably about another 20 inches at least. So the smaller bar is all good to go, everything is done with this, but then with the bigger one, the one that's going to be going like straight out, I need to add more of a slant onto this, because uh, right now it's kind of going out on an angle, so I need to make it a little bit steeper and then it should be coming out nice and straight. So I'm just going to do that real quick and then uh, I can cut off the rest. I might need more bar. I definitely will be needing that actually, so obviously I don't want to order any because then I got to wait for it to come, so I'm going to try and find a bar just as strong as this at a store and hopefully I could get that but let me just make this a little bit steeper and then we will be back alrighty guys so I don't know if you could tell but I am sweating bullets this thing gives off some heat and also it's super hot out right now but I just finished up cutting up this piece and I gotta say it is definitely looking really really good so what I'm gonna do before I weld it is to uh, cut this pipe just right across nice and straight and then I was gonna just weld on uh, that pipe onto that bar first but now that I think about it, it's definitely gonna be easier uh, for me to just weld them together and then put them all in as a unit so I'm just gonna measure how much I need to cut off this pipe I'm definitely gonna need more because I'm supposed to be doing the other the same thing on the other side so I don't know if we're gonna be in luck right now but let's just see how much we need to take out I'm gonna need to cut off about 20 inches off of that other pipe in order for the whole engine to really be able to cradle in this. So before I even did all this, I planned on adding um, some more like bars over here uh, where I could put the supports because it's gonna be right about here, right, right in the middle of these two and there's nothing here. So I might just add like a couple like cross member type style pipes and then uh, weld those in and then weld up so then it's all one piece. Then once that's all in, there's gonna be supports going uh, from the bottom of the frame, as I said earlier. And basically the same thing for the other side. So now let's see what 20 inches leaves us at. <laughs> it leaves us at an inch of piping left. So that honestly sucks. I don't even know if it's worth cutting. On second thought, I don't think I'm even gonna cut this because it's not even worth the time of going all the way through it just to have an inch, which I'm basically just not gonna even be able to use. But I might be able to take advantage of having that extra inch on one side. So let's pretend that this is an extra pipe that I have and not the angled one. I could have this pipe um, go up just like how it is on here on the extra pipe that I'm gonna be adding over here and it can act as a support just like that, as a little leg. So that is honestly perfect, but unfortunately I'm all out of pipe. So let's just go ahead and uh, turn on the welder, get on my welding gear and everything, and I'll probably weld them up in the vise, and then I'll weld it onto here. What I'm gonna end up doing first is just taking out the, uh, the big grinder again, grinding it all clean to a nice shiny metal, and then, uh, then it'll be time to weld. I'm just gonna tack it up first, then pick it up, uh, put it onto the uh, frame, make sure it's all good, and then I can fully weld it up. Alrighty guys, so I got everything on, um, so I'm just gonna do a quick little tack, just on like the bottom and top, just cause honestly, I'm just kind of eyeballing this right now. So if it's off by a little bit, I can just break it apart and re redo it. Cause it's really hard to put them together while they're not on there. It's just kind of hard. <laughs> so let me just tack this up real quick and we'll see how it looks. All right, that's actually pretty good. So now I just want to get eye level with it. All right, that definitely looks really good. Looks nice and horizontal. And I'm just resting it on the axle because it's just a good way to kind of keep it even because as long as this is all good, then I can kind of put this how I need it. And obviously it's going to be raised up a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, weld this thing up. Hopefully I don't burn a hole through it or nothing. This is my first like serious welding on a tube like this or on an angle like this too. So I'm just going to take my time. With it.
So guys, she ain't pretty, but she is most likely strong. It was definitely a challenge for me to kind of, because uh, there was a there was a tiny, tiny gap between the two, and I had to fill it in, and I've never really done that before, but I was able to kind of figure it out, and I'm pretty sure I got this all good to go. It doesn't have to be pretty to be strong, and I definitely think it's strong, but I'm going to let it cool down before I even think about laying my hand on this. And I was just thinking before... I, I always said I do not want to rush this build series. Obviously, we don't have the uh, the super strong pipe here, and I have to order online, or at least I think I have to order online. I'm going to go to the hardware store that I bought that flat bar at that we're going to be using, and also that other pipe, and see if they have anything as big as this. If they don't, if they don't have it, then I don't think anybody else will. So while this is cooling down, I'm going to go run to the hardware store, see if they have it, and then when we come back, if they have it, then we can continue. If not, then I'm definitely just going to order it. I was just kind of gonna try that but that's the main bottom engine mount and I don't want to use stuff as thin as that I, I would like to use stuff as thick as this so I just do not want to rush through this just to get it done today so there might have to be a couple parts on getting this engine into here hopefully you guys will understand just cuz you know I don't want to mess this up or anything and, and I know you guys don't want to see me mess this up so I think it's best if we just take our time with this and really make sure that we get every little piece as perfect as I can get it. All right, so actually on second thought, I actually just messaged my friend that just works at that hardware store. So instead of driving all the way up there, I asked him what the thickest pipe he has and I'll see if he has something as thick as that one. But this pipe is not cheap online. It's like 150 bucks for three feet and that's what I ordered. So when I do the same thing on this side, I wanna try and maybe do the same exact thing. And I was gonna use this pipe for the supports as well, but after thinking, I think this pipe that I have uh, right here is good enough to support the weight of it. Definitely since it's gonna be up and down, but if it were supporting it like somewhere in the middle, how that pipe is, I wouldn't really trust it. I'm sure it wouldn't really bow or anything, but, but that really wouldn't be my cup of tea. But I think I'm going to try and see how the supports could come out with this. I have it clamped down in the vise right now, and I'm basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to make a U-shape so that it fits uh, onto the bottom of this pipe. And then what I'll probably do after that is uh, tack down this side to that bar just to keep it in place and I'll probably have something holding it up right here just so I'm sure the tacks won't really hold this whole thing. And then I'll see exactly where I want to put these, possibly even on this plate right here because it, it's probably, it honestly lines up pretty good with this bar so I could finish up welding all of this so I won't have to make any more like diagonals from across and then get, get under it somehow so I can take advantage of me putting that there. And this flat bar is relatively thick so we shouldn't have to worry at all about that bowing at all. So guys, let's crank this out real quick. This should be way faster than uh, that pipe just because it's thinner. So the whole dozer should doze right through there and the cutting wheel should go right through it as well. So what I was just marking before is four and a half inches. So that's how tall I want the support to be. So I'm going to cut it there. And the reason I chose that is because it is four inches from the top of the axle. And I figured a half an inch should be well enough of playroom if it were to flex half an inch, which I don't think it will, but I was just gonna put this on first, but I figured after thinking for a little bit that if I just do this first and possibly put this all on together, it would be way easier to hold this all up uh, while I'm welding it onto that arm over there. So let's go ahead and cut this up real quick and then we will get to welding. So the first support is now cut and I think I'm gonna do the first one right here on second thought. So I'm gonna weld this on here first, uh, make sure it'll line up with the pipe and then I'll rest that on there, possibly weld it on, and then I'll weld it onto there so it'll be nice and still. guys so everything is coming together just how I envisioned it um, this is super strong I didn't even uh, fully weld up over there yet just in case I want to change my mind or anything like that I'm gonna fully weld up everything once I have the other pipe but this thing is solid I could definitely like stand on this and jump on it and it will not even budge welds aren't that pretty once again I mean I was having some issues with burning holes through it. Um, I was burning some holes over here pretty bad but I was able to seal them up and everything so that is all good to go. But I just got the word that the hardware store does not have pipe that thick. But he also told me of another store that like supplies 
piping like the one that I just put on, the really thick one, but they're only open on the weekdays and today is Saturday. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this into like a two part putting the engine in series. And I'm super pumped that he told me about that store because instead of ordering it and needing to wait for shipping and everything, I'm going to be able to go on Monday, get that and, and start back up on this. So I'm pretty happy what we got done today. I mean, like I said, and I keep saying, I do not want to rush this. This is my first time ever fabricating anything like this. And so far, I'm pretty proud of myself. May, might not look much to some of you, but to this, to me, this is like a masterpiece. Definitely the Harbor Freight tools are working nicely, so shout out to them. And no, I'm not sponsored by them, but if they want to, then uh, you can hook your boy up. But anyway, guys, I'm gonna be ending off the video here. Stay tuned for the next part on getting in this engine. I'm destined to get it in in next video. If we had the materials, then it would definitely be in in today's video. I, I won't stop until that thing's in. But enjoy some clips after the outro if you want to see them of me welding for the very first time and how I kind of improved on myself and fixed the mistakes that I made. So enjoy those clips. But anyway, follow my social medias. They will be in the outro of this video, Instagram and Snapchat I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, share friends with the channel. Oh yeah. Woo wee! <laughs> Alrighty guys, so first time ever welding <laughs> is complete. So that's my first attempt right there. Really awful. Second attempt, burnt a hole in it. And third attempt, I had somewhat of a bead going. But my friend uh, that's helping with this said I'm going too fast and I should start off on some flat bar. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna pick up some flat bar quick and uh, practice on that a little bit. But I think I should be able to get it down. I'll definitely say that even though these welds are awful, if I stand on this side and try and break this in half while pulling on it, it, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, before it wasn't breaking, but now it is, so. I'd say I'm about ready to uh, weld some bridges. Let's go. I'm just kidding. Not bad. Getting a little better every step of the way. Okay, that one wasn't so great. Alrighty guys, so here is a uh, little bit of a closer look. So this is when I first started off on this. So obviously uh, pretty messy and then I started to get a little bit better. Starting to get down some actual beads. I kind of messed up a little bit over there and over here. This one didn't come out that great. But supposedly it's pretty normal for the flux welders to um, cause all of that spatter and everything. And especially because I'm using the Harbor Freight uh, flux cord. So most people usually take like a grinder to all that and clean that up. But I mean, once I get down some more beads kind of like that and even better, that I should be in pretty good shape. So it's a little bit while later and I just went ahead and posted a picture on Instagram just showing my progress over my first like five welds and everything and a ton of you guys were giving me some great comments if you guys don't already have me on Instagram or Snapchat definitely add me on those they are on the outro of the video but as you guys can see this is all from before how much like sputtering and spattering there is everywhere and a couple tips from you guys were to sit down um, I had to turn up my wire feed speed I was only running it on like four to five I even went down to three at some times, but then I just cranked it up to like eight or so. It's still on minimum, and I was able to crank out some pretty nice speeds right here. Now, obviously they're not perfect, but they are definitely strong, way stronger than these, and like, I think as strong as a good weld would be. So I'm pretty pumped on that. I'm still gonna keep going until, you know, I could get that down every single time. I was going too fast before, and it's just, for me, I don't know why, but it's, it's hard for me to go so slow, so. I just kind of got to relax and kind of go through and everything and really make sure that the puddle of metal is keeps going and I don't let it stop. 